Hey guys, it's Andrea. Welcome back to the channel. Guys, thank you so much for watching my video on Matthew Daddario on the Return to the Shadows podcast. And guys, I just want to quickly address a elephant in the room before we go any further. Yes, I am filming in my bedroom. My housemate is out of the house because you, if you follow me on the main channel, you would have seen the reasons why I film outside. And guys, um, the return to the Shadows podcast, awesome podcast. They go through like the legal reasons, what they were thinking, feeling at the time, what the vibe was on set and things like that. And they are also starting to do ones more on the legal aspects, why the show was shut down, how it was shut down, how the copyright arguments got so intense as well so guys I will do one when that one a video when that one comes out now guys I'm have another awesome tv show for you that features a Shadow Hunters alumni um Grey's Anatomy and it is such an iconic show in Australia in Australia it is on Hulu as well and guys um i am watching it through my vpn at the moment which let's say there are certain scenes and stuff because i'm watching it on an app not through my tv that are definitely better to be watched on the tv so hulu if you've got hulu or disney plus is where it's streaming. And uh, guys, so we all know Grey's Anatomy, but we see in this season that the hospital's gone through a bit of a rebirth. There's a new lot of interns. And Harry Shum Jr. played Dr. Benson Kwan. And that is a homage to the name. It's a homage to a very groundbreaking actor who was also in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Haven't seen the movie yet, guys. If you can show me, if you can drop it in the comments below where I can watch that, that would be awesome. But, guys, we need to be much more aware of a thing, of our TV and what we're watching on TV as well. But the hospital has gone through a bit of a rebirth so they're going back to its roots where the interns are the main part of the story. And one particular episode that's resonated with me, and I'm doing the whole series over on my blog, so my main blog, Annie in Wonderland, How to Experience the NDIS. It now has a more professional website and there is a forum, so I'll just put a plug in for that one there, a forum in the members only area. You do need to log in because we are talking about some very sensitive topics over there. And guys, one of them being disability and sexuality. Um, this is where I saw this episode tying in to sexual education. I know in Australia we have a program called Life Education. It's a Queensland-based one as well. And so they also do modified programs for people with disabilities, but they do, um, guys, if you're a Queenslander, you'll remember Healthy Harold. So they teach about anatomy, how to look after your body, sexuality, individuality, and then that leads on to your high school education around consent, protection, birth control for women, and for men, um, consent, sexuality. Um, guys are going to be real using protection as well. Um, so, and they also... Um, work alongside a lot of the chaplaincy programs in the real world as well. So in Australia, we have quite a unique chaplaincy program called Red Frogs. and They go into schools, educate kids on alcohol, drinking, 
before going to school is as well. So I'll do a shout out to Red Frogs as well. But this particular episode is literally called Sex Education, guys. And they show the old versus the new talking about sex education to a group of high schoolers. And this is something that we see people with disabilities, especially psychosocial disabilities. So that might be brain injuries, autism, ADHD, um, or general undiagnosed intellectual disabilities, aren't really taught about sexual relationships, intimacy as well. And I've had to figure a lot of that out on my own. And I was also at a event yesterday where we got talking about the NDIS people with disabilities and the fact that some of their caregivers and stuff, they're not, the caregivers are taught boundaries, but not how to enforce those boundaries, which is a really interesting topic, guys, because if a person with a disability isn't taught about good touch, bad touch, consent, boundaries, who is a friend, who is a paid caregiver, where you can hug someone, where you can't hug someone, where you can touch someone, where you can't touch someone, and that grey area of friendship, flirting, uh, moving on to the next stage, it can potentially get them into a lot of trouble because they don't actually have the capacity or they haven't even been taught about it. So, guys, um, Grey's Anatomy, awesome show. They do have some of the originals in there, but it looks like they're passing the baton on to these new interns. And given it has Harry Shum Jr. in it, he plays a very different role from anything he's played before. And it's great to see him break out of the typical dancer, fantasy or inspiration immigrant story route into something that's more mainstream. And, guys, at the end of this one, there's a very unexpected scene as well. And it really has some interesting messages of what's going on in a America with some of their political decisions and the stripping away of women's rights. Um, so it is going back to the very much original intention of Grey's, which is to use a medical drama to talk about societal issues. And I want to applaud Shauna Rhymes on this one as well. And Shauna Rhymes, it is the same person who's done Inventing Anna. I only learnt that one today as well. And guys, um, I owe people an apology. I didn't get to the YouTube meetup today because I did actually sleep in. My body did need that sleep. My sleep schedule is very rough at the moment as well. But guys, um, I know this has been a bit of a rambly one with media as well. But guys, um, also... If you can subscribe to this channel as well as my other one, that would be great. And if you want to share, feel free. And guys, I've learnt that YouTube is actually unsubscribing people from channels that they watch. A lot of the micro creators, which is a category I fall into, without their consent. So check that you are subbed to both channels. Or if you just want to be subbed to my media one, that's fine. And guys, my media one, I'm a lot more freer and talk about a lot more diverse media as well. And guys, um, we'll be potentially doing a live stream tomorrow. So look out for that one as well. Um, if you, so that will be Australian Eastern Standard Time around 10.30. I'm planning to do that one as well. So, guys, I have had a renewed enthusiasm for YouTube. And for those who follow me over on the other channel, um, I have got over my decision regret. So I will be talking about decision regret and impulse control 
and what was the decision that I made and the consequences that I'm dealing with now. It's not a major one. It's things that I can re easily replace. But um, who I got to help me with these decisions, I should have thought through a bit further as well. Um, so, guys, that will be tomorrow. And, guys, again, if you can like, share, subscribe. And, guys, drop it in the comments. Have you seen Harry in Grey's Anatomy? And what do you think of his character? I'm starting to make up my mind going, there's a backstory there to why he is older than all of the interns, why he's a perfectionist. And my money is actually on that Dr. Kwan is neurodiverse in some way because we do see him being very much a perfectionist um he seems to have trouble looking people in the eyes he lies to get ahead so my take is like simone there is something there that he doesn't want to get out and my i suspect it is that dr kwan is neurodiverse and i know Grey's anatomy has had neurodiverse and great gender representation as well both in the past and in this current series and guys i am doing a planning a video on inventing anna as well so guys i know this one's as i said and i think it's about the second time a bit of rambling through the weeds but um this is my vanity project channel so guys thank you for watching